Hey, welcome to another episode of Metabolic Radio with your hosts, Taylor Empey and, and Shane Pace. Whichever spot I'm in. <laughs> we are on a Q&A binge right now, people. We are answering questions that we've been getting over the weeks. Um, and uh, so tune in because your question might be answered today. Yep. Shall we get Actually, into it? Oh, hopefully, hopefully if we post this correctly, um, we will uh, have your names attached. So maybe, maybe no, what? No, we won't. They just will have to. They'll just have to tune in and and uh, um, oh it, it'll be a mystery. It'll be a surprise. Surprise! <laughs> Gotta make them listen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Force it. So first one, Mike Moon. What's up, man? Um, he says, quick question about keto or ketogenic diet. This is my first time lifting daily while on a keto diet. Um, should I adjust my protein macros, uh, or my basically how, how many proteins he's eating or the ratio from 30% to compensate for the increased need in my body for protein, or should I just be uh, eating more in general? I'm really trying to cut fat here, so I'm not trying to eat more than 1,500 to 2,000 calories per day. I guess the big question is, will my body prioritize the increase in protein to convert sh to sugars and pull me out of keto, or will it prioritize to rebuild muscle? I tend to think it's the former since I assume your body doesn't really quote unquote want to be in keto and it considers it a malnourished state. What uh, question or what uh, advice do you have? Not true. You want to start? Uh, I did. Not true. <laughs> okay, that's all. That's all the insight you have. No, I've got a lot more than that. But that's not true. Elaborate. Um, so it's not that your body doesn't want to be in keto. So if you have excessive amounts of protein, um, the problem is is high levels of protein, which is what will take you out of keto. Uh, it's not excessive. Not necessarily high, but excess. Yes. Yes. Because I would so, say those are different things. They are different things without question. So if you have, um, if you're on a ketogenic type based diet, uh, people think that a keto diet is based on high proteins. They're incorrect. Mm -hmm. It's based on high fats and and reasonable proteins is what it's based on. Now, protein isn't. Your body doesn't want to convert proteins to a energy source by nature because it doesn't need to. Well, um, and it's a, it's a hard process. Gluconeogenesis, which is the conversion of protein to glucose um, for the use of energy, not repair, is is it does not yield a lot of energy and it's it's a rough process metabolically speaking. And it is why, a rough, yes, it is, it is rough for sure. So it's not the ideal, it's the least ideal, I would say one of the least ideal ways to, for your body to generate energy um, in comparison to other macronutrients. Oh, without question. Fats is a, is a source the body actually likes. It runs more, in my opinion, okay, and this is kind of an opinion piece, but in my opinion, it runs more um, effectively on fats than it does on carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, is, a, is a, 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 in general, is a high energy boost when fats are more of a sustained, steady energy source. Carbohydrates and, can... Um, be have more variability, I think, in in, in blood sugar versus uh, st uh, the stability of a uh, ketogenic. There, uh, there is some, there is some truth to that. Um, the uh, uh, the difference between carbohydrates and fats in general is the the activation speed of it, mm -hmm. um, and 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 the effect that it has on insulin. Mm -hmm. um, Ketones will cause um, insulin to go up. That's why when somebody is a is a diabetic, and they go into uh, ketoacidosis, is what the problem is. But they start trying to go towards a keto type thing, it will kill them because th their their insulin will start to spike up to deal with the problems because it's trying to even it out. If you're healthy, um, being in ketosis is safe and it's not going to cause problems to you. But um, and but just like know, it is even, more consistent. even professional, like nutrition professionals get this wrong. Ketosis is not ketoacidosis. At all. Like, you, like Shane said, normal, healthy individuals do not have a risk of, keto, of ketoacidosis. That's predominantly in, in diabetic uh, uh, populations. And so 
um, high fat diets can still be helpful for diabetic populations, depending on how you do it. But there is a higher risk of ketoacidosis in, well, the, in those populations. But okay, a keto so you're diet right. is not ketoacidosis. Directly. You're right. You're right. But let's talk a little bit on that since we're on that topic now. So the thing you got to understand when it comes to that exact detail is um, a type 1 diabetic I would never even play with ketogenic diets at all because that I said will, high fat though. I, did, I didn't say necessarily a keto diet. No, I understand those that. Are, what I'm, those are different. They are different without question. But what I'm saying is is, is I would stay away from um, even high fat diet based because that would put you at a low carb um, because of the nature of the way your body reacts because it is not, it doesn't deal with – it doesn't produce insulin the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, you have much um, a much higher po- probability of getting ketoacidosis. In fact, you have almost a uh, – it's so high that I would almost put, call it 100 percent if you're type 1 where your you're, 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 uh, insulin is not going to be able to deal with the ketones. That's mm. the scary side of it. But a type 2 is a completely different monster and what – Taylor's talking about um, with a type two. It has been show, it shows signs, and in a lot of studies, has gone as far as to reverse type two out yes. completely. If you yes. do it right, um, you still want to be you know in the care of a doctor, and you want to do this correctly. Mm-hmm. But if you do it correctly, you can completely kill type two diabetes if you do it correctly with this kind yep. of diet. I've done um, it with I've done it with clients. So, so that's it's possible. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It, it, there is a big difference between the two. That's why I want to do a clarifier on that because type 1 and type 2 are dramatically different, and the body's way of reacting is dramatically different. Uh, type 2 is resistant, but it, it still produces and it still uses insulin. Um, the, the, in type 1s, it stopped producing. Mm-hmm. And I have never seen anything. I'm not saying it's not out there, and I'm not saying it's not possible. But I have never personally seen anything where you can back out a type one or 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 uh, repair it away. You're you're kind of my understanding of it. Um, and again, it could be that I'm just lacking information. But my understanding is, as a type one, you cannot fix. Mm-hmm. You can just deal with more intelligently, and that's why I say I would I would I would do less high high fats for that reason. But um, but like I said, if your doctor, who is probably a closer expert by any means than we are, um, would recommend it, I would trust him or them. I shouldn't say him, but them. Um, and I w- but I would still, again, that, that is a – the risk factors go up dramatically with type 1. Mm-hmm. That's all. Um, so to make sure we answer Mike's question, um, he said he basically increased his lifting frequency. So his mm-hmm. volume went up. Sure. Um, does he need to compensate by increasing his ratio of protein or does he just need to eat a larger amount of the current ratios he's eating is, is my understanding of the question, but he does not want to exceed. He's not, he's trying not to exceed 1500 to 2000 calories a day. So well, I want to answer, I want to answer this in, in a way that you're not expecting. Okay. So, so here's, here's something first off. Um, we got our hands on, um, some, if you will, surplus, um, or, or uh, proteins that we we are we are putting out. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I want to clarify because I'm not going to be the normal person that says that. Hey, guess what? We have the opportunity to sell proteins. You need to eat a ton. I'm not that guy, and I'm not going to be that guy. So, mm-hmm. um, but but understand that we are going to be putting that out there. If somebody wants to um, acquire that, they'll have the opportunity. I don't want to get into that in depth, but I want to go step away from that now and go into what I actually want to mean on top of that. Um, the percentages of protein that you need still fall into the same category, um, and and when you're talking in pounds, um, not in kilograms, but in pounds, um, you're talking like 0.7 um, to 1.2. Uh, anything above that, in my opinion, is a waste of money. Um, They've shown I've, – I've actually read studies that show a beneficial effect up to words of four, but I think that's insane, and I think it's an absolute overkill. And that was and, and in a really small done. population. That was an extremely small population, and it was only one study that I know of, and I want to say it was in England. Um, not that that makes a difference that it was in England, but um, – <laughs> But 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 you know that but but the reality of it, I mean that's just that's where I th- believe the study was found. Yeah. So so, um, but like I said, that being said, I don't recommend four. I don't recommend two. I I would say if you keep your percentages in, and you're eating it to point seven to one point two, uh, and and you're eating that level of protein, do not supplement. There's no reason to supplement beyond that. Um, 
in my opinion, and and and, and I want your your voice on this for sure, Taylor. Um, but in my opinion, you're not going to uh, uh, hit that correctly in the United States. That's why many people supplement um, because their protein consumption is lower than that in general when they're doing it by whole foods. But if you can do it in whole foods, that is the best way mm -hmm. to get anything in the way of, of food in, in, to, to fuel muscle growth or, or energy to run your body. Mm -hmm. um, but – I just I wanted to put that all out there in the correct way. So so my I'm gonna sorry to cut you off one more time, but you're good. I, I wanted to put out one more statement on this, and that is, in my opinion, Mike, um, I, I covered this quite a bit. Uh, in fact, Ben from the forum was on on this this fly as well. We were kind of flying around it, but um, just just realize that raising your fats is going to be better if you're going that direction to lose, you know. I know oh, I'm attacking this wrong. That's not even what I want to say, but it does work that way, so I'm not going to take it away. Um, but if you're going after that concept, I would raise your fat levels because that's how ketosis works, um, like we've talked about many times before. Um, and your proteins don't necessarily need to go up. You're, you're not going to really find a beneficial effect. You just got to have the right quantities. Yeah. So let's say he's eating 2,000 calories a day, right? Uh mm -hmm. And he, I don't know his weight, but point three. So if he eats 30% at 2000 calories, um, that's 150 grams of protein per day. Um, knowing Mike slightly personally, I know he weighs more than that. Uh, last I saw him probably, I could be wrong, man. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, so, I mean, I would call that like slightly less than a, a gram per pound. Now, he said he was eating potentially as low as 1,500, which I'm telling you right now, I would not recommend for you, Mike. Nope, um, nope, never. Not even because of protein levels. That would be possibly too low. That puts it about Energy 113, levels. 113 grams. Yeah, but that's lower than your basal metabolic rate. Um, if you follow um, like what we, what we talk about with basal metabolic rate and what is taught in our nutrition guide, the Nutrition Atlas, um, your, your basal metabolic rate, especially if you're lifting daily, you're probably... Um, I'm rough ballparking it, but 1,700, 1,800, 1,900, depending on your weight. If you if you're exceeding uh, 200 pounds, then your uh, then with your weight, then your um, basal metabolic rate is probably over 2,000 calories a day. Anyway, that's for normal metabolic function when you're sedentary. So you don't have to worry about eating below around that range ish as your bare bare minimum. You need to get that. You may even need more. So um, I would I would not go under eighteen for you, um, but you should run your own numbers just to see what your specific needs are for that. And then if you're still going for fat loss, then yeah, you want to be in negative energy balance um, uh, potentially for that. Uh, I would say if you've increased your lifting frequency, there's a potential for a slight protein increase. Um, but not by much, um, just because of additional breakdown, um, your body may need additional protein uh, for repair, but it also may respond to the stimulus um, with more effective utilization and calorie partitioning of your current amino acids to continue to build muscle. Think of it like this. If a person goes into the gym and they start lifting weights without changing anything about their diet, they will still put on muscle for a period of time because of the stimulus factor and your, their body's ability to, to, for calorie partitioning to be, to take those amino acids and use them for repair. You're basically, your body's learning how to use what it has already more effectively. Um, and you, your body may do that to an extent, which may mean you don't need to increase your protein. However, I don't know the internal physiological changes going on in your body specifically. So there's a possibility you might need a slight increase. You wouldn't need to do anything probably more than 5% at most um at at 2000 calories probably i this is a rough estimate but that's that's what i'm thinking um and uh then do what shane said and, and increase if, if you're feeling like you need to compensate energy wise increase if you're trying to stay keto increase your fats um and that's what i would well do. and on top of that if you uh if you are keto i like i told you in the forum um in my opinion you know like i said taylor and i view on this is a little bit different He's a lot more detailed on it, but I, uh, I wouldn't count calories mm -hmm. at all. I would look at your percentages and I would get a guesstimate on, on a gauge 
on your uh, protein intake as far as grams, and then the, and then the rest of it I would just fill in the majority of it with with fats and with an ins- insignificant amount of of uh, carbs, fiber based carbohydrates. Yep. Yep. And yep. and when and that's, Shane, and, and I assume, you should be fine on that. I assume when you talk about that, Shane, um, not tracking what you're doing is you're you're referring to basically tracking through how your body reacts like true that is is the is the body fat moving or the, is the tape measure getting leaner am i seeing more muscle that's how i'm going to base my nutrition intake not necessarily off energy value yes and no uh you are correct overall but but there's there's another key to it that's that's fairly prevalent is when you're eating like that um you have uh less of a desire to eat oh yeah so mm-hmm. so so it's more satisfying Right. So it, overall, the odds are you're going to eat less calories automatically, and and your body will probably um, start to to um, uh, sway one way or the other to to where you're going to want to eat, and your body will probably react the way it should. Um, if you continue to gain fat, I would modify how much you're eating by by reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you're saying, absolutely, I agree with it. I, you know, I feel that way about everything, even exercise. But uh, because if you don't do it like that, you're not making it uh, your own. You're, you're absolutely uh, back in what we talked about in the last one on Beachbody. Um, you're you're just following somebody else's plan, and it doesn't necessarily work for your body the same way. And so, uh, finding the benefits, um. You're going to have to, to play with it and actually kind of build into it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. You know, I, it, it's not truly intuitive, but it's basically a, the equivalent of an intuitive diet mm-hmm. because your body your body will swing towards what it should have as as you're eating, as long as you understand what you're taking in. Carbohydrates on a tendency, just so you understand, if you're in an eating contest and you're eating something that is uh, like, let's say it was all ice cream, you're eating an astronomical amount of ice cream in this competition. And you get full. If you eat something that completely conflicts with that with salts, it'll change your desire to eat. Carbohydrates mm-hmm. makes you want to eat more, but your body after a while will say, "Whoa, that's way too much," and gets sick. It may still want to eat it; it'll crave it, but it may it it would likely make you ill, and you you it would make you not want to eat anything because you want to to, to lose it. Um, but if you eat salt based stuff, your body will change and then crave even more carbohydrates because your body. One of the problems with carbohydrate based diets. Is is the satiation? It makes it so that you want to eat more. Mm-hmm. It, it's not it's not something you know. If you're tracking it and you're keeping it under control, you'll have a better reaction. But as soon as you eat more of it, you'll crave more, and that's that's one of the issues. That doesn't really happen in a ketogenic diet. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I'm saying. I, when that's I part, did it personally, I'm and I'm an I'm an ectomorph who runs really well off carbs. Um, yep. that's true. Uh, when I did keto, I had remarkably high levels of satiety. It was it was mm-hmm. pretty interesting actually. Yep. Um, so his last part of his question is: um, So will the body prioritize the increase in protein to be converted to sugars um, to pull uh, and and pull them out of ketosis, being used for energy essentially, or will it um, be prioritized to rebuild muscle? And um, my answer to that question is um, to, to a two part. One, typically, no, it won't pull you um, out of a ketogenic state um, if you are if your body is not maxed out on how much protein intake you have. Like if you're consuming excess, it can get stored as fat. It could be used for energy um, and those kind of things. If you're not to excess, it um, will be typically prioritized for your muscle repair, especially if you're training in the fashion that you did describe that you're going to be training in. Um, however, there is um, there is evidence that shows that branched chain amino acids, so leucine, isoleucine, and valine, can be used for energy immediately during an exercise state, even in the presence of fats or carbohydrates. So, however, your overall BCAA intake, even from the amount of grams of protein that you're consuming now, is going to be like 10, 15, maybe, maybe as high as 15 grams of BCAAs a day. What do you think? Um, okay, so so – since you went down the road of something that, that goes along with um, intermittent fasting protocols and um, what is some of the supplementation you can take with it, uh, there has been evidence supported by quite a few studies. They're not like immense. It's not a, a great difference, but it is it is noticeable um, to take BCAAs. 
um, if you are fasted. So is there going to be a reaction? Absolutely, with what you're saying, without question. Um, the uh, um, ah, There was something I was going to make a point on in my brain. Stopping. Maybe I shouldn't even say it, obviously. My head's saying, no, don't say I, that, I guess, because I remember. I think it's insignificant. I think I the think amount so of glucose you're going to so produce too. from the BCAAs in oh, your that's diet of proteins say. is so insignificant. <clears throat> it may pull you out for a small amount of time, but the amount of glucose it's going to produce is going to be insignificant enough that you don't need to worry about it. Oh, without if you're on a without keto question. So, diet. Absolutely. So, so, but this is what I was going to say. Okay, so it, it is something that is worth talking about. Um, so let's talk more directly on the protein aspect. So, for, from what I was going to say. Um, I differ a little bit on your perspective on that, um, on the protein side of it. On the if, calorie if it ha- partitioning of it? Uh, like sort of, yes. what utilized for? Okay. Correct, correct. So so the difference that, that I have is, is the initial stuff is exactly right with what Taylor said. It, it, your, your proteins, your body doesn't automatically want to transfer those to, to an energy source. That's the last like kind of line of defense. Like is commonly marketed, by the way, which is false. Or not correct. false, but is often correct. incorrect. Uh, yeah, but when it's called an energy source, by the way they're calling it, even though it has some truth to it, it's false, dude. It does. You, 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 I mean, don't. You're being nice by saying that's by giving them the benefit uh, benefit of the fact that it can can be used by the body that direction. Mm-hmm. It's not an energy source. That's not what its purpose is. That's it's a not potential. why it's used by the body. Yeah. Just because it has a potential, I think that's a misnomer to throw it out there. Just because it's yeah. it's not realistic. That being said, if your fat levels are low. Okay, and you're eating a, a a so you're dropping everything else. You're dropping your carbs. You're dropping your fats, and it has a protein where it's looking at it, even though it's at a certain level. Um, that that usually it wouldn't use it because the body requires energy. It will start pulling from that source and start turning it into it. The reality is, though, in most cases with protein-based uh, 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 conversion, it comes from the muscle. It doesn't necessarily come from the intake of of proteins. And and that's a bigger problem. So oh, so you're under- saying the the actual process of gluconeogenesis. Absolutely, and so that's something that people need to understand as well. Is when they start talking about the idea that your body goes into a catabolic state, it can if it doesn't have enough of an energy source because then it starts to pull from muscle, and it does that so that it has the potential to survive. That's a survival mechanism. It's the same concept as if if um, you have uh, mineral deficiencies, your body will actually metabolize Absolutely bone true. calcium from yep. your bones and pull that back into circulation, de- uh, causing you know osteopenia, osteoporosis, or just we- uh, weakening of the bone structure. So Absolutely it'll actually true. steal it from that type of uh, metabolic active true. tissue. Yep. Even if you're doing things like taking calcium to, to keep your bone strength up, you, it'll still do the exact same thing and you're, you'll still have deficiencies in your bone. That's absolutely true. So the, I just wanted that to be out there as a clarifier because the reality is if you if you cut your fats too much, uh, the odds are it will start pulling from proteins and the source will change. Will that take you out of ketosis? That's the question that I will haven't answered yet. Um, yes, it will. If, 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 you, if you have... If you have a high enough pull, and, and that's not that's not expected. Don't get me wrong on this. That is not an expected thing. That, that's partly why when they say it's a high protein diet when they're doing this, um, they're they're mistaken on this because if you have really high proteins and your body says, oh, I got all this potential energy source, and it starts pulling from it, it will change it because it, what does it change it into? It changes it into a sugar source, yeah. and so that will completely take you out of ketosis because it won't run on ketones. It'll be running off the sugar and the proteins. However, I think the level of protein that he's consuming is oh, the odds sma- are so small enough. I mean, not small, not so small, but small no. enough that any uh, conversion into gl- for, from gluconeogenesis would be so small he'd be out of ketosis for not very long. Um, um, likely, and, he'd, and he would burn through it. No, no, no. Uh, likely, that, likely, that's my absolutely opinion. true. No, no, I absolutely agree with you. The, like I said, the only thing, the only reason why I wanted it out there is because for an explanation source. Um, that could it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it is it likely? No, but mm-hmm. it could. And yeah. so, to answer your question directly, which is could it? Yes, absolutely it can, but the odds are against it. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of, uh, I pulled in a question from Ben, um, and that's related to this. Even though we were going to answer it later, uh, he said in in episode ninety four, you talk about consumption of BCAAs while intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. First, it is my understanding that leucine is the only amino in the BCAAs or branched chain amino acids that has any studies significantly backing it. 
isoleucine and valine have not been individually shown to improve muscle growth and stimulate um, motor response. If you guys have seen studies on the effects of isoleucine and valine showing, in, have you seen any uh, studies on showing the effects of isoleucine and valine showing individual benefits uh, separate from leucine? <coughs> Excuse me. If so, how do they compare to leucine? Um, honestly, Ben, off the top of my head, I can't I can't note the studies uh, <coughs> from from uh, the nutrition courses that I've taken and my textbooks um, that do cite their 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 research. Um, branch chain amino acids still have a benefit, um, and like the other BCAAs do, but leucine is the king. Um, I would say, you know, like using high concentrations of leucine. Um, that's why when you buy BCAAs, you'll typically see higher ratio of leucine being used. Or um, I personally supplement with HMB or beta hydroxymethylbutyrate, which is a metabolite of leucine. <coughs> Excuse me, I got to get some water. There you go. And um, <clears throat> hold on real quick. Boom. And so um, I would uh, still, I mean, again, we always go back to supplements or supplements, right? They're, they're in there to uh, supplement your diet. If you're getting substantial branch chain amino acids from your protein sources in your diet and you have a diverse profile of proteins coming in, you don't even need a BCAA supplement. Um, if you want to maximize it, then I would say if, you're, if your choice is buying BCAAs with a lower amount of leucine or buying HMB, um, with high concentrations of leucine, I would I would just buy the HMB in my opinion. I, I don't know if you differ on that, Shane. No, uh, but the funny thing is, is you bring up HMB. So it is um, the studies on those years back uh, had a had it had a, such an amazingly cool effect um, that it was worth noting it. Uh, and then over time, um, what well, came out of studies towards it actually gave almost no effect on it. The funny thing is, is now it's kind of gone back. The swing has gone in a different direction and it's back to the way it was before. And they're showing a lot of signs that it is very beneficial. So the, I only want to bring that up because that has been one that has swung. The pendulum has swung back and forth on that mm -hmm. um, over the course of years. Uh, the current belief and and the current studies that have come out more recently about it is that it is beneficial. So so yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with everything you're saying. I just wanted to add that in there because that's one of the things that is kind of has bounced. Yeah, <clears throat> and honestly, um, from my personal experience, uh, I'm not just saying this based off anecdote or even just personal research, though some of it is personal research. Um, but uh, I've taken a, a, an in-depth dietary supplements course with a professor who. Um, is is finishing up uh, his PhD and um, in a in a related science and um, he's very thorough in in his education on supplementation and I trust his uh, his research and opinion on this and he re he does recommend HMB. Um, oh yeah. So I, I back it, uh, <laughs> like I said a, as a supplement. Currently, the studies have come out back again, and that's what I'm saying. It's swung back the other direction. Mm -hmm. um, the only the only reason why I, I I even voice that is because the science has changed so rapidly in what we perceive and understand, um, and because it has swung both directions. I just think that needs to be known. Um, do I personally believe that it's beneficial and and it falls back to the stuff that was initially put out there as well as where it's gone today? I, that is where I believe it is as well, <clears throat> but. Like I said, if you if you follow the course of it as it has progressed along the lines, mm -hmm. in the midsection, right there in the center, they absolutely said it was pointless and worthless. Mm. Um, does that mean that they're wrong? I, I think that they, they could be right. Do I believe that they are? No. I think that yeah. the current sciences are more accurate. I just I wanted to be, put it out there because I want people to understand that. And if you're curious on more information about it, one, I mean, we when we recommend supplementation, we'll tell you. We, we've looked at either at the research or we've seen that it's backed by research. Um, and HMB, to my understanding, if you visit examine.com, examine um, does a lot on it. It will Absolutely. cite its resources and yep. research for you, and you can go look at it there. And I believe they have a positive um, review of uh, HMB or um, wow. that metabolite of leucine specifically. Yeah, the so, last time I looked at it, that's what I found. Uh, mm -hmm. Granted, I haven't looked at it for a while. So so his last part of the question was also when consuming branched-chain amino acids while doing intermittent fasting, one thing I have seen was that the processed aminos could be converted to glucose through gluconeogenesis, like we talked about. Would throw would it throw the body out of an intermittent fasting or ketotic state? Um, have you seen any studies 
for or against this. Um, I haven't looked specifically for studies based on this, but I do know, like I said, I mentioned previously, BCAAs can be converted to glucose during a state of high stress exercise, even in the presence of fats and carbohydrates. That is true. And so, yes, that, is true. that would be technically possible to bring you out of a ketotic state. Um, I need to be minimals all get out though. Exactly. And that's the thing is it's like, okay, how many BCAAs are you taking? Five grams? maybe 10 yeah. and that's a lot like in one supplement dose okay that's 40 calories so you're going to be out of a ketotic state for 40 calories worth of energy which I'm is, not really is almost that non-existent yeah i'm yeah, not really that that's, that's like maybe an hour yeah if that, <laughs> like be, uh, and not even in an exercise state that's like minutes in an that's exercise what I was, state that's what I was gonna, even that it would be so low that you wouldn't recognize it at all so i would yeah. say no so i think you're splitting hairs um but Real, to your realistically question, realistically i would say no even though the answer is yes yeah. And I mean, I've taken BCAAs while doing IF and while doing a ketogenic diet, and I continued to see substantial fat loss. When right. I did keto for three months, I lost like four to 5% body fat. And when I did IF for the first time on a 16 by eight protocol for three months, I lost 13 pounds of body fat, kept all my muscle, may have possibly gained a pound of lean mass. And I supplemented BCAAs during a fasted weight training workout every three, four days a week. Right. And I still saw great results. So honestly, I think it's a hair splitting detail. Me too. But there's your answer. Um, all right. Uh, you know what? Let's let's wrap it up. How does that sound? Boom. Okay. So, uh, people, if you would like your question answered on the show, just head over to Facebook, type in Metabolic Radio Private Forum, uh, request to join the group, post your question there. We'll add you to the conversation and answer your question on the show. You can also email us directly if you have a specific question for Shane or myself. Just go to metabolicradio.com and or you can just email taylor at metabolicradio.com or shane at metabolicradio.com and uh, we'd love to answer your questions on the show and welcome you to our community. Yep. Um, also, uh, please note that uh, you can still get our nutrition atlas at metabolicreator.com. This is really affordable for what you're going to get, which is going to teach you how to design um, your own uh, flexible dieting meal plan um, in terms of th utilizing tools like um, intuitive eating, whole food diets, and calculating your specific calories, proteins, carbs, fats, um, body type specific recommendations, as well as accounting for the thermic effect of food, total daily energy expenditure, and the margin of error, which a lot of people don't account for um, and give you a, a good range to start shooting for. And so that's something you can reuse over and over again as your body continues to change to keep you um, feeding yourself appropriately versus just following the same flat diet uh, all the time. Um, so head over to Metabolic radio.com to check that out cool i was i was going to bring up before we got off um people of interviewing value so oh, um, uh -huh. i will do this very very briefly um i am currently trying to get the uh, gentleman that deals with uh, athlean x oh. uh, jeff cavalier jeff cavalier um i have not had him contact me back i have i have emailed him if you guys would like to be involved in trying to get him to come on our show, because I would love to have him on here, I am actually telling you to barrage him. And actually, that's a that's a good point. If you we have we have some interviews lined up um, with some local professionals here, and we did the one with Josh Carter, and we have some other things in the pipeline for you um, that are just being well, worked out right now. But right, Dr. You, Ryan, I don't want to I don't want to forget him because he's impressed mm -hmm. the crap out of me. Uh, his he and I had a slight dispute, which. In theory, I'm right, and I had to concede to him, however. So I, I, I want to have him on here huge. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, his is called The Movement. Um, gosh, I want to give him an ad, an ad I mean, uh, advertisement, sort of, but I can't remember his name site. So I won't bring it up today. Maybe we'll do it later. But if you guys have um, individuals that you would like us to reach out to to attempt an interview with, um, drop their names. Let us know. Um, for sure. And we will try to contact them. Yep, for sure. Because okay, we would like to get on anybody we can get on. And, and like I said, uh, with Jeff Cavalier, I would love to have him on. So if we can get him to acknowledge us and, and come on our show, that's what I'm desirous of. If you guys would help us, that would be phenomenal. Yep, I agree. Cool. Okay, people, have a good day. Talk to you soon. Peace.